the right trade at the right price we've got volume on this as aggregation this isn't a max signal this is a, a volume signal and we can see into this bottom edge there's obviously blue below red and orange isn't there this, that's quite clearly obvious there's blue below red and orange quite clearly diverging and the one that diverges the most of course is this candle here that's the one that really diverges because everything's going up at that stage except for the blue line it's the only candle in that chart that does that isn't it so that's your buy trade. Well, if that's your buy trade on oil, and you start thinking about that buy trade on oil, you start considering that as a buy trade on oil, that would have put you into a buy trade right there, wouldn't it? Well, that's what happened to that buy trade. That buy trade was just before the big swing as the dollar obviously got crushed with the uh, the, the CPI number right so it's uh, you know that was the buy trade that kicked in at that exact point in terms of that overall shape of market and it was tying in with the other elements I mean if we look at the shape of the uh, the uh, if we look at the underlying shape here of all the lines you can see they're all going up inflation break evens is going up we can see that we can see some of the supply demand lines are all going up so there's an awful lot of uh, information available for that buy trade but again it's uh, you're 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 gambling on a data release and you might like to gamble on a data release you might be confident about gambling on a data release they've taken all the considerations you've thought about it you've considered all the potential downside risks to taking a, day, a data release trade and you felt that it's worth your while going for it and if you did go for it of course uh, the outcome to that trade was pretty good a thousand dollars of course is always pretty good and especially when it happened over the course of somewhere in excess of about an hour maximum that's a five minute chart so you know when you're seeing these elements and remember it's not about just one thing is it it's not about seeing one piece of a jigsaw puzzle it's about trying to tie in all the various jigsaw puzzle pieces at the same time looking at the present moment it looks like there's a bit of an opportunity maybe to work some sell side uh, top lines you can start to see that that's starting to fan out here. It's starting to fan out a little bit here, not quite in the right order, but you're seeing that top line could become an opportunity to work short into this oil top edge. So you start watching for those opportunities. You get a chance to go into the order book and you start asking that particular question. Have I got a trapped trader? Have I got anybody that's in the wrong trade up here? Is it a busy buy? If it's a busy buy, life's starting to become a little bit better for me. It looks like the dealers are trying to get a pump and dump, to be perfectly honest, up through the 82.75s. So it doesn't look ideal at this stage, does it? It doesn't get it doesn't look ideal because it looks like they're still trying to pump it to the higher price. So obviously that's something we can then recognize simply by then referring to the fact that there does seem to be value to sell it. So what are they doing with a big bid on the book? They're trying to manipulate the price higher by pumping the bids. They're pumping the bids to try and get that price up to 75 and start breaking some of those liquidity stop areas. And there it goes, exactly on cue, right? Exactly on cue. They did exactly what we said they were going to do. They were pumping the bids higher. Now they haven't flipped it when the buyer came in there. So that's obviously something you're gonna be looking at going, damn it, if only they'd flipped that buy trade coming back out of that top line, I could have got a quick short sell against it. But they didn't flip it, did they? But it doesn't mean it's not going to start turning into a top line sell. But that was another great call. We called this that they were going to pump it higher. When it was trading at 65, it's now trading at 80. So again, it's not so much the fact that you maybe didn't get the long trade on. It's the fact that you didn't get the short trade on either. And then lost a fortune on the basis that you were just not actually paying attention to what was going on in the way that the market was uh, pumping this price higher into what looked like a very obvious top line stop at the break of 75s that we called before it happened. It's kind of obvious, isn't it? But it's only obvious the more you do it. It only becomes clearer the more you, you involve yourself in the process.
And, you know, and if you don't involve yourself in the process, then you still end up making the same stupid mistake, selling into this too early, trying to capture a little bit of an edge, trying to capture a little bit of a play before it's setting up, trying to be the guy that stops the market rallying without reading the tape, without reading the order flow at that stage. And that's obviously where you end up losing lots of money. Well, that's no use, guys. That's no use at all. You've got to be the guy that's in these trades as they're forming, reading the tape, reading all the pieces of the information that's available to you to read. And if you do that, you end up potentially going for the squeeze instead of trying to fade too soon. Trading's not about one aspect, it's about all the aspects added together. It's not a simple affair, guys. If it was, everybody would be sitting with a, a little coded algorithm making a lot of monies. And that's not the case. Simply not the case, is it?